Holy crap, guys, tonight I am at a place I thought I would never get to. Look at this right behind me. You're not gonna believe where I'm at right now. This is the actual train bridge from Stand By Me. Holy crap, guys. Wait till you hear this. You're not gonna believe this. This is so boss. I gotta catch my breath. I ran all the way from my house. I ran all the way home. All right, guys, right now I am standing in the middle of the street in Castle Rock, Oregon, which is actually Brownsville, Oregon, and we are gonna have the most awesome Stand By Me adventure and movie night ever. I am staying at an Airbnb literally in the middle of town that you can actually see in the movie. In the opening scene, Gordy buys a magazine from this store down here, crosses the street, we'll come back to that in a minute, and walks down this street right here, and there is my Airbnb. Boss man, Bob Cormier here. It's a beautiful Friday morning in Portland. This is called the Brownsville Break Room. This actually used to be an antique store, and at one time it was the printing, uh, the printing factory, I guess, for the Times newspaper. And I found it last week on Airbnb, and this is where we are staying tonight. So this is our movie setup. We've got our movie right here along with a projector which is going to show the movie on the big screen right up there. And guys look at our snacks for the night. We had to do this right. We've got Pez. We've got Twinkies. We've got Root Beer and Mickey Mouse Club Pez dispensers. Mickey's a mouse, Donald's a duck, and Pluto's a dog. Where the hell is Goofy? Yes, I said, where is Goofy? Because guys, I bought 12 Mickey Mouse Pez dispensers and we didn't get one Goofy. But tell me, Vern would not be proud of all this. Look, this is literally all cherry flavored Pez here. So we are on Main Street in Brownsville, Oregon. Guys, I still cannot believe that I'm here. In the opening scene, Gordy is in this store right here buying a magazine. What in the heck? There is a statue of Anakin Skywalker inside this building. This is now a Medicare building, but it was the store that Gordy was shopping at when he bought his magazine for 25 cents. He buys his magazine, walks out this store right here, down the sidewalk, crosses the street. You can see that scaffolding. He continues this way and walks down this street. We're gonna visit that street again later because there's some awesome stuff I wanna show you down there. But it's funny because he walks down that street, but the tree house is actually that way. Oh my God, it's 88 degrees out here. This head is gonna be so sunburned by the time I'm done with this. So the landscape has changed a bit, but the tree is still here. Right where this giant house is and this little clearing right here, that's where Gordy would have come up over the dirt pile, over this way to the treehouse and up the ladder. This is so amazing to see right now, guys. This is the actual tree where the treehouse would have stood overlooking Castle Rock right down there. And if you look very closely, that's where we just were filming when Gordy walked the opposite direction. <laughs> I absolutely love that in movies when they pick a background because it looks good. Gordy walked out of the store down the other street, which was actually going away from the treehouse, but then miraculously he ends up walking up here to the treehouse, which is behind the stores that he was just at. I always thought it would be so cool to be up in that treehouse looking out the window over Castle Rock. But the closest thing you're ever gonna get to that is if you stay in an Airbnb, which you just happen to be in luck because that is one right there. So Gordy climbs up in the treehouse. Chris and Teddy are playing cards. There's another knock. Vern. It's Vern, who proceeds to come in, catch his breath, and ask them. You guys wanna go see a dead body? They all perk up, and Vern proceeds to tell them about how he heard his brother Billy and Charlie Hogan discussing how they found Ray Brower. Brocker. Or Brower, or Flowers, whatever his name is. The train must have hit him. So guys, at this point, I have to regret to tell you that I did not film Vern's house. It's a private property. It's down kind of a long driveway. It really is in bad condition. And I didn't feel right going up and knocking on the door and asking if I could film the house. But as we say goodbye to the treehouse tree, we move to our next location. I wanted to share my friend's enthusiasm, but I couldn't. 
We then see Gordy leaning out his window asking his mom if she's seen his canteen. And this is that house right here. This is it, guys. Gordy's mom would have been standing right about here folding laundry. His dad would have been standing over here, I don't know, hoeing or something like that. Gordy's up in the window here asking where his canteen is, and his dad finally answers him. It's in Denny's room. Oh. And when Gordy leaves the house, he's wearing Denny's lucky Yankees cap. Rest in peace, Denny. What in the world? Look at this tree! So after Gordy finds his canteen, we see him walking up this street right here, in this direction. With Gordy walking towards the camera, we can see that curve in the cement back there, as well as these two cement ledges, but these columns were not yet built. He continues walking this way, and the camera angle changes to right about here. You can see these buildings in the background. Gordy stops about here. Chris jumps off a truck right here. They start talking, and you can see the edge of this building in the background, as Chris says. You want to see something? Sure, what? Come on, man. What is it? I'm always curious about continuity in movies, so I always wonder about this stuff. Right about here is where Chris met up with Gordy, and he said, do you want to see something? And they take off running in that direction, which would take them right behind that string of stores, which takes them to the Blue Point Diner. And that's actually pretty accurate. As in 1985, this fencing probably didn't exist, so they could have gone straight back there behind the buildings. I really like this sign. That's why we're going to come back to it in a little bit, because it's very Stand By Me-ish. Now in the movie, it looks like they come right around the corner and they're behind the Blue Point Diner. But in reality, there's a whole string of stores they have to go down behind. Come on, man, what is it? They run around the corner to the Blue Point Diner. Wait a minute. They run around the corner to the Blue Point Diner. Not this, this. Not this, this. We'll talk about that one in a minute. This is the real Blue Point Diner. There were a lot of trees over here at the time, but they came around this corner right over here. This has been bricked over, but it was a window at the time. This wasn't here, and neither was this. But right back here is where they stood when Chris pulled out the 45. There was a trash can right here. Gordy accidentally shot the trash can, and the Tupper Cheerio! babe came running straight out that door talking about- Hey, who did that? Who's letting cherry bombs off out here? They ran down this way and around the front. So yes, the Blue Point Diner was originally right here in the film, but the signs are down now, and to pay tribute, the lady who owns this building down here had it stenciled on this door just to make our little hearts happy. Gordy and Chris come walking around this corner right here, and the camera follows them up this way as they argue because Gordy thinks that Chris knew the gun was loaded. They stop right about here, which is right now the Brownsville Saloon, but in those days it was the Billiard Hall, where Ace and Eyeball hang out, in which whom shortly came out that door and stole Gordy's hat. Before we move on with that, I just think this is funny. This building at the end of the street can so prominently be seen at the end of the movie when they enter back into Castle Rock. Aside from background, it didn't really play a part in the movie, so I don't recall what it was. But today, it's a Carlson's Hardware. And I think it's very appropriate that we're talking about Ace right now. And this just happens to be an Ace hardware. But anyways, let's get back to the scene. The boys walk up this way. They stop in front of the saloon. Ace and Eyeball come out and Ace steals Gordy's hat. Chris is standing right here when he calls him an ace hole and Ace says, Ooh. Ace throws Chris on the ground right here, threatens him with a cigarette and tells him to take it back. He eventually takes it back and Ace says, I feel a whole lot better about this. See you later, girls. As him and Eyeball walk down the sidewalk and around the corner with Gordy's hat, never to be seen again. Brushing it off, Chris and Gordy walk up this way, kicking each other in the butt, past the Blue Point Diner. Wait. Past the Blue Point Diner. Wait. Past the Blue Point Diner. Okay, hold on a minute. So just like behind the Blue Point Diner, things have also changed in the front. In the movie, this was the Blue Point Diner. Now it's been moved down here. Right there, the Blue Point Diner. Once again, just to make our little hearts happy. 
All right, guys, our next location is at Mosby Creek Trailhead in Cottage Grove, Oregon, which is actually about 45 minutes to an hour away from Brownsville. This is the exact location where the guys enter the tracks for the very first time to start their journey. This is nothing but a trail now, but this used to be railroad tracks. And I know that this is the exact location, not only because of the curve in the tracks or the tree line right up here, but if you look over here, you can see where there used to be another set of tracks. At the beginning of the scene, you can see where the tracks are beginning to split right at the bottom of the screen. And that would have been right here where the other set of tracks would have originally gone off. Now you also notice in the scene that there are other trains in the background. That's because there used to be another train track right back here. You can't really see any remnants of it over here. And I have something in my shoe. However, <laughs> when you go to Google, earth you can go all the way back to 1985 in this area that one's really blurry but you can pull up 1994 and you can see clearly where there were train tracks here actually at that point the train tracks were already removed but you can still see like where there's a dirt path where they used to be so if we follow these tracks from around the bend where they start and we go all the way down here you can't even see it right now but the train bridge is actually right down there now one thing that i love about movies is that they make it look like the guys enter right here here, start walking towards the camera and then as they keep walking away from the camera they're at the bridge but that is not at all how it works they film this part first then they go all the way down to the bridge and they set up their cameras again and then they film the guys walking away just like this <laughs> So the place we just were was way back there about 60 70 yards and the bridge is all the way up here right here look how beautiful this thing is guys i am so excited i can't stand it so this is it guys this is the train bridge where they start their journey a few things have changed the bridge itself is the same but again as you can see they've removed the train tracks they put up these things here like these barriers they put up this thing here so you can't drive any kind of a, I don't know, ATV or whatever through. And right up here you can even see two bolt holes that used to hold the plates that were on there. But the trestle itself is exactly the same. I cannot believe I'm walking the path that Teddy and Vern and Gordy and Chris walked. Did your mother have any kids that lived? <laughs> Okay, now we gotta hike it for a little bit. We're walking on the exact trail that they took, guys. At least for a little bit. Cause down this long path here, this all used to be the railroad track. We're gonna get to our next location where they realized that nobody brought any food. And Teddy says, what did you bring a comb for? You don't even have any hair. And Vern says, I brought it for you guys. <laughs> and look at this guys, as we walk in this direction away from that train bridge, Imagine yourself as one of the boys leaving on this adventure, walking the rails to the back Harlow Road to find the body of Ray Brocker or Brower or Flowers. Dang, this is a long walk. I bet you anything back in 1985 when they were filming this, they were like, does anybody know when Uber is gonna be invented? <laughs> By the time I get there, I'm not going to be fat anymore. <laughs> All right, guys, we are now at the location of Teddy's train dodge, attempted train dodge, and I am so obsessive. I'm out here looking at these fence posts, trying to match them up like, which one is the exact one? But these things have corroded over time, so there's really no way of telling. And everything is so overgrown out here now. I mean, it's been 35 years since the movie was filmed, so it's kind of tough to tell. But I think I've brought it down to a very close area. Some people have taken a picture of this area right here and they thought that that was it. But I believe it was actually filmed from that direction in this direction. Because even with all these trees growing up here now, the landscape matches so much better. The mountains were closer to them. There were hills that were closer to them. This is just a big, flat, open field here. Plus, with this being all mountain over here on this side, they would have had to get their wide shot from out in that field, walking that way towards the bridge instead of that way away from the bridge, just because it's more aesthetically pleasing. So this is where Teddy would have been standing, pretending he was shooting the train, just like the beach at Normandy. You can see the giant jagged mountain in the back here, which means the other boys would have been standing right down there watching when Chris ran up and jerked Teddy off the tracks. The train would have been coming from that direction towards Teddy. And this is the view you would have seen of Teddy's front shooting towards the train. 
back here you can see there's a house on my left. It's covered by trees right now, but you can see it if you look close. And you can see it behind Teddy in that scene. Chris rushes up, grabs Teddy, jerks him off the tracks, and they fight. And then they say, skin it. And this was all filmed from that direction with the boys walking that direction towards the bridge they just crossed to start their journey. And this just scared the crap out of me because as I look down there, I see lights blinking. <laughs> this isn't even train tracks anymore. And I was like, holy crap. Have gun, we'll travel, reads the card of a man. A night without armor in a savage land. Okay guys, for the next scene, we are on Huston Street in Veneta, Oregon. And this stretch of road right here exactly is where Ace and the gang were playing mailbox baseball. When you're looking for movie locations, sometimes Hollywood tells the truth. At the beginning of that scene, they show a very pretty looking mailbox with an address on it. I found the name of this street, I looked up that address, and it brought me right here. They were flying down the road right here, and this spot exactly is where Ace was nailing mailboxes. Then right about here is where he hit the wooden one and was out. Hi, horses. How cool would it be if this was one of the original posts that held a mailbox that got mailbox baseballed? All right, guys, that's it. Ace and the gang, mailbox baseball, right here. Next one. All right, guys, we got, all right, guys, we gotta be very quiet because we don't want Chopper to sick balls. This is the actual Castle Rock salvage yard. I've seen others post pictures of this place and they post another area that they say is the fence, but this actually looks a lot like it. Look at the very small dents in these. That looks like the actual dents when the boys were standing there getting ready to scale the fence. And actually, upon further inspection of those video clips, I realize the other people may be right in a sense because there's another section of fence. When Gordy gets back from Quidicello's, he sees the guys climbing a totally different fence. He runs, climbs up it, and jumps over because Chopper is about to sick balls. Guys, this is an actual salvage yard in Veneta, Oregon. And it does say posted, no trespassing, keep out. I don't see anybody on site, so we're gonna take off. But there it is, guys, feast your eyes. Now he said, sick em, boy. But what I heard was, chopper, sick balls. <laughs> So when the guys are sitting at the salvage yard, they're having fun, they're spitting on each other, they're making fun of each other's moms. One of them has to go get some food. They gather up their change, I think they had $2.37, and Gordy goes down to a little store called Quidicello's, which he says is right at the end of the road. But it's actually more than 10 miles away, or at least it was, in what is now an empty lot in Junction City, Oregon. Actually, it might still be Veneta. I'm not quite sure. But this is the lot right here. Quidicellos would have stood right here. It was knocked down a few years ago after it was left abandoned. This would have been where the gas pumps were right up front on the corner here. And right around here by this huge tree stump is where the counter would have been that Gordy would have bought a buck and a half a hamburger. Rest in peace, Quidicellos. Here go, kid, buck and a half a hamburger. This is the actual train bridge where Teddy and Chris and Gordy and Vern ran across being chased by the train and Gordy and Vern had to dodge the train and jump off right there. Look at this, how amazing is this? This is the actual train trestle, guys. Let's go up here and take a better look from the end. As you can see, this is no longer a working uh, train track, train bridge. But this is it right here, guys. Look at this. How incredible is that? Look, people have even gone out here and written things like Stand By Me on those tracks. I don't know why they removed the, uh, the actual tracks. I wish they wouldn't have, but it is so cool that the bridge is here. This is just absolutely amazing. I cannot believe that I am here. I never ever thought that I would actually make it to this location. Now this is in Bernie, California. Look at this, let's, let's just follow this a minute. So when the train comes, they're standing about halfway down there right after Vern dropped the comb. Gordy feels the tracks and then he stands up and he says, 
Vern's already crawling on the tracks, so he lays down and hugs the tracks. Gordy has to rip him up off the tracks. Chris and Teddy are way up here, so they start running, and they come off this side here. Gordy and Vern run as fast as they possibly can, and right as they get about right here, they jump off and dodge the train, and they land down here by these rocks. <coughs> the ultimate train dodge. Hey, at least now we know when the next train was due. I just got to come over the side here and look at these tracks. Look at that. How amazing is that, guys? If you've never seen Stand By Me, you have to watch it, and then you'll understand how cool this bridge is. Holy crap, guys, I'm telling you. Just being here right now looking at this blows me away. Stand By Me, one of my favorite movies of all time. And there is the actual train bridge. Amazing. There it is, guys. One more look. And I have to give an awesome shout out to this beautiful woman right here for going on these crazy adventures with me because we are literally in the middle of nowhere. Right. Now in the next scene, the guys are sitting around the campfire when Chris tells Gordy to tell one of his great stories. Gordy proceeds to tell the story about the great Tri-County Bake Off and Pie Eat. And more specifically, Lard Crack. Actually, they called him... But we're not gonna cuss in this video. Lard crack it is. This is Pioneer Park where that scene was filmed. This was a tough one. I don't know exactly where it was filmed because it was filmed predominantly inside a tent and lard crack is only standing outside at one point preparing for the pie eating contest and you can't really see anything in the background that really gives away where it was except for some phone lines. And I don't see any phone lines at all. All I see are trees. <laughs> But in different locations around Oregon, you can find signs like this that point out where certain movies were filmed. And right down here it says, the park in front of you is the location of the film's blueberry eating pie contest. Blueberry eating pie contest? Blueberry pie eating contest. There we go. In which Lard Crack prepares by drinking a whole bottle of castor oil and eating a raw egg. He proceeds to dig into the pies and then he starts puking all over everybody, which makes everybody else puke all over everybody, which makes everybody else puke all over everybody. Lard Crack sits back and enjoys his revenge. <laughs> Now at this point, Billy and Charlie have kept their secret as long as they possibly can. Charlie and Ace are right here inside the bar playing pool, and Billy and Eyeball would have been right here fishing off this bridge. It would have been a much higher angle so you could see the water better behind them, but this trestle over here matches up with the angle of the river on that side much better than this side. Although with that patch of dirt down there, I thought maybe it was from this side. But no, I was wrong. It's from that side. Yeah, it's definitely from this side. Right here is where they would have been standing. There's actually a shot pointing up at them from down there where you can see them standing right here with this bracket in the background and this cross bracket beside them. All right, guys, our next location is out here in Eugene, Oregon. We have to turn left on this road right here, right at the corner of Royal Avenue and Furbutt Road. Unfortunately, it's raining, but you can still see where we are. This is the exact strip where Ace and his gang were drag racing in the scene. Up here, you can see on the right, there is a structure that holds the lines. And on the left, you're gonna see a street up here. And that's where the truck had to swerve to miss Ace and all the logs came flying off his truck. Ace rolled over some of them and then he said, I won. When the boys return home, they cross this bridge right here, which actually is the same bridge that Charlie and Eyeball were fishing off of earlier. It is so amazing right now to be standing here looking at this bridge, knowing that this is the one they crossed on Stand By Me at the end of the movie. If you look down towards the end, you can even see the hardware store. What an amazing sight, guys. And if you ever come to Brownsville, this is exactly how you enter it. And if you're a Stand By Me fan like I am, this absolutely blows you away. After they cross the bridge, they continue walking down this way into town and they stop 
right here to say their goodbyes, where you can see the roof of this building in the scene. Vern goes in this direction where he finds a penny right there in the middle of the street. And guys, if we walk out into the middle of the street right where the scene took place, you can see there is a penny embedded in the street. All to make our little hearts happy. And as we've noted a couple times, over time things change. So if you really pay attention, you'll note that there was a yellow fire hydrant about right here, and the phone pole was right here. But those two things have been changed. Teddy says goodbye and heads up that way to that house, while Chris and Gordy continue into town this way. They walk down this way and around the corner, down that street, but the scene is shot through this window right here as a reflection. This window right here is a barber shop. They shoot this shot through that window as a reflection. And if I move over here, you can see me, but they have tricks in Hollywood where you can't see their cameras. The Brownsville stitching parlor that you can see right there in the reflection is actually Velma's custom made apparel. That sign would have been hanging right under these lights up here. And guys, that sign still exists. Stay tuned to the end of the video. They walk right down the sidewalk through here, past this building, which is the Women's Auxiliary. Has a quilting bee sign up here and a sign on the door for the Labor Day picnic. And guys, that sign still exists. And as we're walking their path, guys, there's another sign down here that you can see in the background of that scene. This is totally awesome that it's still hanging up here, even though it's painted over. This sign right here, which used to read, Coin Laundry. Now, as the movie comes to an end, with Gordy and Chris walking past this building, going in that direction, they end up back once again at the treehouse, which is in the complete opposite direction up around this corner past this towel <laughs> and as we look down the street to carlson's you can see this enormous house right here and the one behind it that i said is an airbnb and that is the location of the treehouse give me some skin I told you before we were gonna come back to this sign, this awesome Coca-Cola sign, and I could definitely go for an ice cold Coca-Cola right now because it is so hot out here. But I believe the only time you see this sign in the movie is when the boys enter back into Castle Rock over the bridge, and you can see it in the background. There is the bridge, and there is the sign on the side of that building. Yeah, it's still there but that's not the best part. This sign was actually painted strictly for the movie as a background prop. I met up with a lady earlier today named Linda who runs the Stand By Me Day page on Facebook. Go over there and join up and come out here for Stand By Me Day. She showed me around the town a little bit, took me in a couple of the museums, showed me a whole bunch of background footage and told me that this sign, again, originally painted for the movie, was supposed to dissolve within a couple of weeks. Yeah, how crazy is that? The paint they use for this mural was supposed to dissolve completely after just a couple of weeks, but it never did. It soaked into the brickwork, and it's still there today. 35 years later. Seriously though, guys, that is really what happened. This was originally painted in 1985 for the movie. It was supposed to dissolve within a couple weeks, and it didn't. It soaked into the bricks, and then it was repainted in 2007 by Kathleen Swayze. That may just be the coolest thing that I learned while I was out here today. All right, guys, we are in the Brownsville City Hall, and look at this. They have the actual Castle Rock City Hall sign that was out front during the filming of the movie. And right beside it is an awesome, looks like a watercolor of all kinds of scenes from the movie. That is cool. We are now in the Lynn County Historical Museum, and look at this. Right up around this corner is some awesome stuff displayed from the movie. Look at this, we've got this Labor Day picnic sign. And down here in the pictures, you can see where it was displayed on the Women's Auxiliary Club on the door. You can see that in the movie in the end scene. This giant Velma's sign right here, you can see in the final scene in the, uh, I think it's in a reflection in the barbershop window. Look at this, we've got the Gangbusters comic book that Gordy was reading on the tracks in the morning when he saw the deer. We've got scripts here, storyboards, 
all kinds of newspaper clippings and things. This is amazing. This thing right here I love the most. This is an awesome blueprint of all the changes that they were making to Brownsville when they were creating Castle Rock. That is so cool right there. I am so obsessive that I'll look through all these scenes to see what all this stuff is called. And here it is, right in front of my eyes. How amazing is that? Down here we've got some actual red paint from the water tower that they walk by. Because that water tower no longer exists now. It kind of crumbled. This is lava rock from the part of the ground where uh, Vern and Gordy jumped off when they dodged the train on the Long Bridge. We got a couple more news articles here, and this one is really cool. This guy right here actually owns the Studebaker that was in the uh, the chicken race against Ace when he was racing against like the other half of his uh, his gang. One more thing to show you, if you are lucky enough that they are open when you get in here, this is the Pioneer Picture Gallery, and right around this corner, right here, is an entire wall of awesome behind-the-scenes pictures and information from Stand By Me. This is unbelievable, some of the stuff that I'm looking at right here, guys. I'm not going to show you anything close up, because if you have the chance to come down here and look at it, I want you to come in here for yourself. But this is so cool. Okay, I'm going to show you one thing, guys, because this is really cool. Remember when we were just over at the Lynn County Historical Museum? Here is the Velma sign in the picture right here. Hanging up on the building in all its glory. That is amazing. And just as we started, I'm ending this awesome video in the middle of the street in Castle Rock, Oregon. I will see you guys next Saturday. <laughs>